Welcome to this episode of OpenSCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk about a project that I just did that was a bit inspired by another YouTuber. This YouTuber is Winston Moy. If you haven't checked him out or you're not aware of him, please do. Uh, does some really interesting stuff with the CNC. Uh, very detailed. He's very methodical. I like the way the guy works and entertaining, too. In his most recent episode here, SpaceX-style wooden grid fin trivets, I'll spit that out, uh, he took basically and, and mocked up a model here, as you see, of the grid fin from one of the SpaceX rockets to make a, a trivet out of and machined it on the CNC. And he was speaking about, he did this in Fusion 360, I might add, so he was talking about some of the complexities, obviously, because you have to lay out each one of these, blah, blah, blah. Well, I decided to try this in OpenSCAD, and I think there must be an easier way to do this. So what I did is I went out on the internet, found a picture of um, a grid fin, brought it into a photo editing program, edited it up, basically just turned it into a black and white image. And then what I did is I used the contouring program inside of, um, not inside of, but uh, that works with OpenSCAD. I've demoed this uh, piece of software before, and I have some links probably to the, those videos uh, below. But um, what happens is it outputs a bunch of polygon data, as you see here. So I've actually set up three different polygons to create this model. So I have a polygon for the actual grid fin itself. I've got another polygon set up, or a series of polygon data point cloud set up for the logo, and then one for the back. And so this actually was a very quick way to model this. I mean, again, we're not going to fly this in space. If we can fly it in space, I probably would have went the longer route uh, and actually modeled this whole piece. But literally, I came up with this and like, you know, did this whole project in like an hour. And uh, brought these together because I decided, unlike in Winston's product, I thought it'd be kind of cool to have the SpaceX logo here embedded in the center. Now, one of the cool things, since the polygons are actually 2D objects, I had to linearly extrude all of these. So I've got it set up now, and I've got it out on Thingiverse as a customizer. And uh, we'll just take a quick look at that because I've got it here in the app customizer, you can see. Uh, so those that are familiar with OpenSCAD can, can, can use it. But for you guys, you guys are power OpenSCAD users. So uh, you can steal the code. I'll have the link down below to the uh, website where it's uh, typically on the OpenSCAD.DIY3DTech.com website. Uh, but what I've done is I've actually brought these three polygons together. And one of the cool things is, you know, I, I'm a trimodal maker, if you will. So I like to work with 3D printers, CNCs, laser cutters, what have you. And so I, I set this up. So if you notice here, I've changed this to a two. And then when I rerun this, well, oh, I forgot I got to turn the base off too uh, because the base is another polygon. So I'm going to turn the base off. And there we go. So I can now export this as an SVG file and cut this out on my CNC or laser. This is what's really cool about it. So I can create an STL object. I can create an SVG object. I can print this on a 3D printer. I can print this or cut this on a, a laser cutter or a CNC. Uh, I could even take the 3D uh, STL object into a, a program and create a, a job path for, you know, make it multidimensional as CNC too. So anyways, I thought this was actually a pretty cool idea of how, you know, I went about to solve the problem. So if you've got a problem, you know, maybe you have a client, maybe you're in, you know, doing a production business, you know, that brings you apart and says, hey, I need one of these, you know, and it's a complex geometry like this. If you think about it, I mean, there's a lot of work that went into this. And that was what kind of spurred me because, you know, Winston was mentioning he had, had invested quite a bit of time to model the whole thing in um, uh, Fusion 360. Now, what he did in fairness too is in his second version, he put the scalloping in. I didn't add the scalloping, something that you could probably do fairly easily. You couldn't do it with the polygon, obviously, because it's 2D, but you could have extruded it and then used the cylinder. But I digress a little bit. It wasn't in my interest to do that. But again, if you have something like this and you want to get from, say, you know, object to production rather quickly, the, using this the, uh, the this polygon ability to create a point cloud, I think is very, very interesting. So I wanted to share those pieces with you. I also wanted to share the concept here, while it might be rather obvious that you can 
um, you know, make this, you know, bimodal. In other words, you know, by starting out as a 2D object and extruding these into 3D space, again, you can solve for whatever solution you need to uh, as far as tooling wise, whether it's a 3D printer, a CNC, a laser cutter, what have you. I can even take this in, into my sign cutter, if you will. I can take the SVG into my sign cutter and, and cut signs with it. So, and I can make this logo. Maybe, maybe I'll actually do that. That sounds like actually a fun project thinking about it. So anyways, tell you what, I've taken this as a coaster version because, oh, one of the things I forgot to mention, I left this rather large. It should, it should print on a 200 by 200 standard printer. And I left it about that size. Um, so if somebody wants to make a trivet out of it or what have you, they can, or if they want a larger uh, iteration of this. Now, if you want a smaller iteration of this, you know, it, it's already got a lot of overhead in it. So I didn't want to add more with, you know, rescaling the entire uh, object using resize. And, and so if you want a smaller version of this, just export it as an STL and bring it into your slicer and just rescale it in your slicer. It's far easier than having to put all that overhead on Thingiverse for this. Or if you want to in the code, just go ahead and, you know, where I instantiate the object, add a, a, add a resize function and make it whatever size you want if you want to modify the code. So anyways, now that I got that rambling out of the way, let's head over, watch a time lapse of this being printed, and then we'll meet back at the bench and take a look at what came out, because we made a coaster. Let's see you over there. Okay, welcome back. So we took a brief look at this being printed. Didn't take very long actually at all. Came out pretty good. Now I downsized this by 50% to make sort of a coasterized version. Printed this on the mono, mono price select mini. Yeah, I got that right. So it came out pretty good. I did have some pulling in the uh, PLA. Uh, I don't know if you can see here. And I find this fairly common where I have a complete flat surface here, you know, completely covered surface and not so on the top. It tends to want to pull up. Uh, one of the things, thinking about it, I should have ran the temperature a little bit higher on the heated bed. Uh, I typically run about 60, 70 on PLA. I should have brought it up, you know, closer to probably 90, and I would have gotten less warping. I did about 15% 15 infill, but it came out great. Uh, very watertight. Didn't have any uh, slicing issues at all with this. And uh, here we go. So, uh, again, this the code will be out on the website and uh, with the link below. And also, this will be a Thingiverse out on Thingiverse, of all places. And so if you want to go out there, you can grab the code. You can grab the code from the website. You can make one of these yourself. Um, I think it's, a, you know, an interesting little trinket, too. Because, again, what I may also do is come up... Um, Christmas ornaments, if you will. Uh, key change, you can make this a little bit smaller, do a key chain out of it. You know, not do the bottom um, for like the ornament key chain. So a lot of different options with this. So if you have a friend that's into space stuff, I think that this is really cool. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget subscribe button coming over there and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.